Hi guys, sitting outside my shed in the garden at the moment because I bought this little toy boat or jet ski as it is in a toy shop. It only cost me £1.75 and we're sitting out here because I'm going to fill it with that expanding foam which smells a bit, gives off fumes so better to do it out here and then once it's expanded and filled the inside I'll trim it and I'm thinking of putting the little water jet in there that I was using on a boat a little while back and make it work like a jet ski it won't be very fast, it's not a very powerful water jet but it might be a bit of fun to get this floating around in the pond so that's the plan. It's just one screw at the front there which I've taken out. So I'll squirt some foam in there, put the top back on and leave it to expand overnight. I filled these up with foam, expanding foam, and left them overnight. This one looks reasonably okay. This one I rather overdid. I wasn't going to put any in there, I was going to save this for a later project, but the tin of foam that I was using, or the spray can, was beginning to go off, so I thought I'd better use it up. So that's why this one's filled, overfilled. This one is not too bad. All I really want is a, a layer in the bottom anyway, just so that it, it won't sink, whatever I do to it. But I should be able to work with that. I'll put that onto one side for now and do a bit of work on it later. Right, the plan is to make this one into a water jet boat. using this little water pump. It's designed for uh, fish tanks, that sort of thing. And I used it on this boat and it was pretty well underpowered because it's quite a large boat for it. And I did wonder whether it'd do any better in a small boat. So this is only hot glued in place. So there's a bit of work I should be able to stick it in there. I've carved out a hole to fit the water pump. I've put a little bit of plastic tubing down the back there with a paper clip through it, glued onto another piece of plastic and then onto a plastic tube that the um, water jet can go in and out. Now I need to connect up a radio control servo to that so we can move it around. This water jet boat has become a bit of a background project. I keep doing bits to it in between other projects. So I'll just show you how far I've got with it. We've got the water jet or water pump in there from a, a fish tank. Well, in fact, it comes from one of my previous projects. I put a servo in there. So the water comes round that pipe and out the jet at the back there. And the servo can direct the jet as required. The inlet comes under here. And that's uh, a pan scourer, I think you call it. I um, don't know what I did with the rest of it. But I've just glued it to the bottom of the boat. Pipe you can take out anyway, but it will act as a filter to stop bits of dirt and that going into the pipe. ESC. A 
receiver. There's another ESC there. I've written B on that one, indicating it's got a brake on it, which we don't need, but we also don't need to worry about this running backwards, because there's no benefit in it running backwards. You can't suck the water in that way and shoot it out the front to make the boat go backwards. So I might use that one instead. And batteries. I've got these little 1S batteries because I can't remember what voltage that motor is. I'll have to look it up whether it's a 3 volt one or a 12 volt one. If it's 12 volt I'll use a bigger battery but if it's only 3 volt then we'll have to stick to a little battery like this one. In fact I should be able to plug that straight into this servo tester. This big loop of tube is to allow it to flex without cracking. Okay, we've got the receiver in place, battery, ESC, they're sort of buried in the foam there. I haven't checked whether the uh, polarities right on the motor. So we got steering. And the motor runs, so we'll go and put it in some water and find out. In the bath, so we can give it a test. Noisy actually. Well, it works. Not quite as fast as I'd hoped it would be, but it works. 